What's going on, beautiful people of YouTube? This is Reem Bean coming at you with another video here. I want to show you how to refurbish one of these NES consoles. I've seen a lot of videos. Uh, it's kind of how I learned is just a collaboration of everybody's videos. Uh, to refurbish one of these, to perform like new, you, you push that game in, you press the button, bam, it comes on. First time, every time. Um, and also how you should never buy a brand new 72 pin connector. This video is going to show you how to take the original OEM and make it perform like it's brand new, how to refurbish it the way it should be. You'll never have to waste your money on those crappy 72 pins that barely work. And it doesn't take much. You'll just need a screwdriver. You don't necessarily need these picks, but they will help. And I'll tell you why later. Uh, you'll need some Q-tips and some alcohol to clean the main board. Uh, one of the most important pieces, this is some 400 grit sandpaper. You can get it at Lowe's. It's three or four dollars a pack you will get a lifetime supply. It does not take much. Uh, just a little square, that's all you're going to need. I have a hand blower, but you can use your mouth. And then a tray just to keep all your little screws. As you can see, I got some in here because I've already trying to make this video short and we're going to have some editing jumps. That way you're not sitting here watching me take screws out for half the video. But I have had experiences with 72 pins. Before I learned actually how to refurbish a Nintendo, I bought one on eBay years ago. Put it in, I'm like, damn, these pins are super tight. It's just a pain in the ass. And plus, it did not fire every time. My games could be completely spotless, and it took a couple tries, and it still wouldn't work perfectly. Um, so after I learned how to refurbish it, and I got them to play perfectly every time, all the time, I will never buy another 72 pin. And plus, I'll be at garage sales, and you know, people will still buy NESs off of eBay, and they'll have a brand new 72 pin in. And they'll tell me, you know, it's got a new pin in there. I'm like, great, this is going to suck when I get it home, because that means i got to change it out. I actually bought a lot off of eBay of original OEM pins just to keep on standby so I can refurbish them uh, whenever I do come across NESs to put the original in. Because, I mean, I will still get a brand new one. I'll know it's a new one when I go to put it in, and it takes the Hulk just to push the damn game in there. Plus, it won't fire every time. So, sit back, watch this video, and I hope this helps. It's going to teach you how to do the disabling of the lockout chip so you'll never have that blinking light issue. Um, plus, just how to clean it up overall, but this is not going to be a completely detailed refurbished job, but it's going to be how to get this thing to play brand new. So, sit back and here we go. Alright, as you can see, this is I come into my game room. This is where I test my NES. Um, you can see I got it, it's actually kind of separated here, just for the fact that I already took the six screws out. I'm trying to make this video quick. I don't. If you don't know how to take out the six beginning screws, you don't need to be doing this video. Uh, but anyways, here's my copy of Contra. We're going to throw it in. Oh, no, we don't want to lift the whole thing. We'll lift you up. Uh, these are not, th these are the original pins in here, so it goes in very, very easily. Too easy. Uh, that's when you know you're dealing with the original pins. If you pick up an NES and it's super tight, chances are you got the, uh, the brand new ones and they're going to suck. Uh, so anyways, we hit the power button, and as you can see on the TV... We're getting a blurred image. Uh, it's blinking because I need to disable the lockout chip. That's going to prevent that blinking from happening. And you can see the game does kind of want to fire. So if we sit here and play with it. There we go. We can get it to work. But that's not working perfectly. That's not the way that I want it. I want it the second I put this in here, push that in. I want it to fire up every time. All right, we're back in here. We're going to start doing this refurb here. Like I said, I already took out these six screws. So we're going to pull this top off. Uh, set, look, ooh, look how dirty that is. You will be surprised the stuff you find in these old NESs. I have, I've, I cleaned out a, uh, a Sega one time and found rolling papers in there. I mean, you never know what you're going to find. All right, this thing is super, super dirty. So what I'm going to do is you're going to see we got, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. These seven screws got to come out. So I'm going to do that. Hopefully we'll do a quick little video jump here. That way you don't see me dicking off with them. One other thing, keep a little tray. You're going to have a bunch of screws. Only two of them are going to be different. Uh, all the others are going to be the same, but keep something to keep them in. Uh, if I'm doing this on the bed, I will actually just leave them in the top of the console, but we're making it pretty. All right, we got those screws off, so now all you got to do is remove this. This is the dust shield here. It comes off very easily. Just keep everything over here with the, with the tray or with the top. Everything's going to be together. Now we got, let's see here, we got one two three four five six uh seven and eight those are the last screws so i'm going to get those now keep in mind these these screws right here if you can see there is a silver now sometimes they're not always silver uh but the the, the second one back right here holding this tray in is the longest one save that well just make sure that you put that in back in the same spot when you go to put it in because that is the only screw that is different and that needs to be because it connects to the base of uh, the nintendo so it keeps everything stable so i'm going to get those gone and we're going to keep going 
one thing I wanted to say is make sure that your screwdriver is magnetized uh, because these things will fall and they get all uh, scattered around. It makes it a lot easier um, if you do not have a magnetized screwdriver, buy one. They're very important when it comes to working on these old consoles. Uh, and you'll see that like screws like in here are a pain in the ass to get, so I can just pull the screws out. And plus, when I go to put them back in, it makes it easier. So these are the last two screws. Once we get these, we are good to go to remove everything else. All right, we got that out. Now to disassemble this is real easy. Grab right here, kind of lift it up, and pull the tray. Just slide it out. There is your tray right there. If you ever wondered how that works, so that's dirty. Very simple mechanism. All right, set that over there in the pile. I'll try to. All right. Here is the 72 pin. You can see that the board is sort of yucky, but we're not going to get crazy detailed on the cleaning here. We're just going to do the main components, get this thing performing like new, show you a quick refurb. Grab the 72 pin, and I like to grab right here. Be careful. There are some, uh, what the hell are we looking at? We, we do got some stuff on the back we don't want to move and all that. So grab this and kind of takes a little bit of strength to pull it off, but kind of slide back and pop it off. That's the 72 pin. And I know that this is the original. You can tell by the yellowing of the keys and that it, it is loose. It, it, they're, they're pushed almost all the way back. So we're going to fix that. So we're going to set that off to the side. <laughs> now, where the pick set comes in. We're going to use this round. Now, I, I picked this pick set up at my local tool store for 5 bucks. Very handy to have. It came with four picks, but these are the only two that I use. And you'll see why. A simple hook. And that what that hook's going to do is I turn this console around. And I lift this up. This is going to be hard for me to do while on camera with this camera behind me. I may kind of... You will see right here, there is a circuit, the 3193A. We are going to remove one of the die or not one of the diodes, but one of the clips going into it. One, two, three, four, over. We are going to bend that one out, and this is where I use that pick. I will manipulate it into there. This is super hard to do with the camera in front. I may set this down. Oh, there we go. All right, with it in. I'll just work it back. All right, now let's see if we can see that on camera. You can see that I bent that one pin back, so that one will not make contact. Some people solder them and go crazy, but I like to be simple and quick. All right, so now we got that one back. That is done, so we're going to fold that back over. We can turn this back around. So now that lockout chip is disabled. It's real quick. It doesn't take much to do. And like I said, you don't need these picks because you can use... I Actually, before I got this pick set, I was using uh, safety pins. Safety pins worked fine. All right. And the next step is going to be this 72-pin connector. Or at least this is the steps that I do. Like I said, I've done 20 or 30 of these NES consoles, so I always have my like my specific routine when doing these. This is when I use this pick right here. But like I said, I was using a safety pin before. What I will do is I will look at this right here, and I will I always start left to right, make sure because this thing's super dirty. We're gonna have to get all that cleaned up. All right. Take your 500 or 400 grit sandpaper. Now I've used 300 too. It's not, it's not going to hurt it if you use 300. I like to fold it over. And we're actually going to sand. Now make sure you're not sanding the bottom here. You'll see the part that connects to the actual board. We're going to leave alone because those are usually in great, great shape. The top is where we're going to take care of. So we're going to stick that in there. And we are just going to go back and forth, sanding it down. Making fresh, fresh, fresh metal there. It's going to show up here. I sand that a good bit here and we're not done sanding we're going to bend these pins out and then sand it one more time but once I feel happy with that initial sanding all right make sure I get corners all right I'm going to take my pin and I'm going to try to do a couple of these while on camera so you can see what I'm talking about and be very very careful with these these pins can come out take a safety pin if you don't have this pick set, which a lot of you probably won't, uh, bend the tip of it with a pair of pliers where it looks. It's got that edge to it, and what we're going to do is we're going to get behind these. Oh, let's see here. And we're just going to bend it up just a little bit, and what we're going to do is go all the way down the line. And it doesn't take much strength, and you're not trying to bend it to touch the roof. You're just bending it just a little bit up. 
All right, and there we go. And you can see, not the best lighting. You can see the difference these three that I've done versus all the others. And you want to keep it even. You don't want one lower than the other. So here's gonna be another editing jump. I'm gonna finish this up and we'll get back to it. All right, we're done. We got all that taken care of. Takes me about three or four minutes. I've done it so many times now. The first time you're doing it, it's gonna be a kind of a pain until you get used to the motion and how much strength to put behind it. Like I said, it only takes me a couple minutes. I've done it many times. And as you can see, I got all these nice and even. So we're going to take this sandpaper again, and we are going to file the rest of it down. And before I stick it all the way in there, I like to get the, the fronts of it, or the front of it. Now, what we're also going to do is, and it it's I don't think it's 100% necessary, but I like to make sure this thing is 100% clean. So I got some water boiling, and we are also going to boil this. Now, you hear of people either doing the bend technique or the boil technique. I do both. It, it's not going to hurt anything. Plus, with this sandpaper leaving residue behind, it gets all that cleaned out. So while I'm getting this sanded, I got water going right now. And all I'm doing is just working this and making sure that I get every nook and cranny. And that this thing is going to be perfect. When I go to put that game in there, you're going to see it's going to fire perfectly. And if your game doesn't fire perfectly after you do this, 99% uh, of the time, it's your game. And I'll also show you how to polish a game as a little bit of bonus part at the end of this. And we're actually going to use an eraser. We're not going to use sandpaper unless you really had to. And there's not many cases I've had where you had to use sandpaper. And that's only for things when it starts to rust up on you. And that's very rare typically an eraser will work but i'm going to finish this up we'll do another editing jump to throwing it in the water and then we're going to show you how to clean the console or get majority of what needs to be out out i got this off of ebay for i think like five or five or eight bucks around that price all it is is a little squeezy uh, little thing here and it shoots a good bit of airflow um what does it call it's called like the uh like the like the hand rocket or something very awesome for getting dust out of these old consoles and that's what we're going to use it for um, what we're going to do is go around all these corners here and we're going to blow this thing out and look at all that. Oh, 30 years of dust and grime building up into these things. And we're going to clean this out as best we can. All right, we got that done. Now I'm actually not going to go crazy and start cleaning all this circuitry on here. Like I said, this is a quick refurb job. This thing's going to work perfectly without me doing that. Um, you should know how to clean a simple console. Um, do not turn this thing on while it's wet. Make sure it's completely dry. You can use things like 91% isopropyl to go around the circuitry to clean around all of the components here. But we're not going to do that. It's, it's simple. If you need to see a video on that, I'm sure there are videos on how to completely clean these things 100%. We're not going to do that. But what we are going to do is we are going to clean this pin. Where This is where the 72 pin connects. So this is very important. This does never seize the light of day. Um, it's good to clean it while everything's up and open. So this is where I will take 91% isopropyl, and some people have uh, contact cleaner, which I would love to have. I just I never find myself getting it. 91 works fine; it doesn't bother me. All right, I get that wet, and what I'm going to do is just go back and forth, back and forth, and you can see that there's any bit of color other than white on here. It is dirty, so we want that clean. I will get make sure you get underneath it too now because that's 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 one of the the sides it's, it's uh, got connections on both sides. All right, I'm gonna dump the 72 pin connector into my pot of boiling water. It's simple size pot. You don't need to see the, the the water boiling. This is very simple stuff. Pot's about that big, about that tall, um, about three or four inches covered in water, and it is boiling super hot. I'm gonna drop this pin connector to where this is on the bottom of the pan, and we're gonna let it sit for two or three minutes. Simple as that. All right, while that's boiling, I went and got a classic game here of Double Dribble. This is the most common game that I find when I pick up lots. This is one that I don't mind getting a little wet because I know that if it ever does rust up on me, uh, which we do take measures to prevent that, I can easily get another one. So that's boiling over there, and what we're going to do is after a couple minutes, I'm going to take some tongs, pull that 72-pin connect, uh, connector out. It only takes eh, 10, 20 seconds before I can actually grab it with my hand. We're going to take this game and we are going to go in and out with that connector. Just to, the, the pins are nice and warm. It, it'll help even them out. Plus, if there's any remaining residue on there, it'll clean them up. All right, as you see, I took my tongs. I got my 72 pin out. It's still a little warm. Be careful. It can be hot. Uh, I'm going to take my game and all I'm going to do is go in and out about four or five times. And like I said, this is just to loosen those pins up and make them 
make them all as even as it can be and remove any residual residue. So after that, we're going to stick it back into the water for around a couple more minutes and it's done. With this being the only purpose of that game, it is wet in here now. So what I will do is I will take my little hand, squeezy, and I will blow this until it is nice and dry. That way, just to prevent rust. Not an expensive game, but at the same time, take care of your game. All right. The 72 pin connector is nice and clean. So what we're going to do is get this thing all shined up, ready to go. All we got to do is dry it, and she is ready to be put back in the NES. I take it. I uh, just hold it on the side of something hard like this off to the side. Well, you can't really see that, can you? All right, take it. I'm going to tap it to get most of that water out. Um, it's going to help during the drying process. And as cheap as it is, I will go into the bathroom, and I will take a hair dryer, and I will blow all this out and make sure it's nice and dry. I do not want to put anything wet back into the console. So, be right back. All right. It's brand new. We got this thing nice and clean, and you can see if we can hold it up. The pins look great. Everything's all bent into shape. So we're going to assemble this back together and test it out, and you will see that this thing should perform just like new. All right, when putting this back, make sure that you put this thing right side up. You want the, the two pins to go onto the board here. Make sure it's lined up, too. You want it to be as perfect as possible for the screws. Give it a push. Don't be scared of it. Just push it right on. All right, with that on... We'll make sure everything's lined up here. All right. So we're going to grab our tray. Now when putting this tray on, you got to make sure there is a little, uh, kind of like a indention here. Not an indention, but a little tab. That's got to go under right here. If it doesn't, it's not going to work properly. So we're going to lift this up, and this goes over top the tray, or over top the, the pin connector. And that's going to go under. And you can tell it's on there if you lift up right here and it doesn't come up. I'm going to set it back down in its hole. There we go. It's got little pin tabs here, and you want to make sure it sets right back on them. Make sure that pin is completely on. Now we're going to start putting the screws back together. Remember to make sure that you put those extra long screws into the sides here on the second one back. Those are the ones that I put in first. Those are the most important. All right, we got those six screws in, and I do want to mention... The two screws up front, if you ever have a problem where this does not like to click down, if these are too tight, that can happen. So make sure you don't overly tighten those. We're going to take our dust shield. We're going to line it back up. Make sure that you are going over the little dots here and everything is good. We're going to take those screws. Now remember, you also got a screw down here and a screw back here. That's where a magnetized screwdriver comes in to help. We're going to get this up and then we're going to put the tray on and we're done. We are done. We're going to take this in here, we're going to test it out, and we're going to see how it performs. Uh, before we do that, I do want to show you how to polish the pins. I told you I would earlier on. We're going to take a game. Here is Darkwing Duck. I have not polished this personally for my collection, so we're going to do it now. Go on eBay, Amazon, order you a set of game bits. They're very cheap, three or four bucks. You'll get two different sizes. Most games use them. Now, there's also a Tri-Wing. You can get a pack that's got a Tri-Wing, both game bits. Uh, these are actually extra long to go into the Virtual Boy, which I needed, but I use them for everything else. This one's got three screws. We're going to remove it. Once I got those lifted, I will leave this back on with the screws so I don't have to take them out. Move that off to the side, and I will take a simple eraser from a pencil. You can use a rubber eraser or just a, a piece of rubber. We are going to go along this board here, and we're simply just going to rub it. We are going to clean this up, and you will see that we turn black, and we're getting a lot of the crud off, and... I will do this until I feel satisfied that it's clean enough and rub a little alcohol on it and guess what this thing is working perfectly. Some games are worse than others. Uh, like I said earlier on you don't have to sand these pins. It's, it's risky. You can definitely hurt these contacts right here going from the, to, going to the pins and not recommended. So uh, Contact cleaner works good too but this right here removes some of the big grime and it works really well actually. I've, uh, like I said I haven't had any bad luck with this. And you can see those are fairly clean now. We're getting a pretty good polish on them. So with that said, we're going to take a little bit of rubbing alcohol. While it's open here, we're going to give it a quick wipe down. All right, we got that cleaned up. Take the dry side and go across it. All right, dump everything out of that cartridge. We're going to put this back. Now, game cartridges, they, Nintendo's famous for making sure that it lines up. If you try to put this in backwards, it simply won't let you. It doesn't line up. So you can't really mess it up. I'm going to put this tab back on in here. One thing to keep in mind is do not over tighten this because you can strip it. I just, once I feel it get tight, I'm satisfied. There we go. 
polish pins. So we're going to take this NES in here, fire it up, and see if it's working. All right, we're back in the game room. We got this thing plugged up. We got our classic Contra. We're also going to do Darkwing Duck since we polished that up. Let's see if she's working first try. We're going to put this in here. Push it in there. Notice I can do that with one finger without having to hulk out. Press the button. And check that out. First time every time. I know Contra is polished. It's working good. Let's try out Darkwing Duck. Push you in there. Press you down. And check that out. Folks, I hope you all enjoyed this video. And I hope this has helped someone out there. Now, I know if you are into retro gaming. Uh oh, something was ringing. I know if you were into retro gaming, um, you probably know how to do a lot of this already, but for the people getting into it or finding yeses, don't want to go crazy, hopefully this video helps you, so hit that like button, share it to someone you think will uh, need it, and I thank you so much for watching, and Dave Romero, if you're watching this, you, you need to message me, man, I still haven't got a hold of you, you won my contest last, I'd like to get you some awesome prizes, man, let me know. But anyways, take care, people, hope you all enjoyed.